Okay, we're working on a 2000 Dodge Neon with a PO301 cylinder number one misfire, as you can see with the trouble code. And what I want to do with this particular car is I, I want to show some other basic tests that you can do for misfire diagnostics. And uh, of course, our next step in this procedure is going to be go to misfire counters. And not all cars have misfire counters, but this being a, a Chrysler product, it does. It's under system tests and it's under our misfire counters. And I wanted to just show something here real quick. This car has a miss. We can feel it. Uh, it pretty much misfires um, at idle only. And it's not showing up on the screen. So, so this shows you the limitations of using misfire monitors. At times, these monitors are not turned on. They're not running all the time. So uh, I'm not sure the software of this car, but um, you know, for us having a dead miss right now at idle and it not showing up, you know, I don't know, but misfire monitor, misfire counters, not always helpful. So next step we're gonna do, go under the hood. We're gonna do a cylinder drop test on cylinder number one and we'll compare it to the other cylinders. All right, now I don't know how well this part's gonna show up on the camera because what I'm doing is I'm gonna listen for RPM drops as I'm sorting the plug wires out one at a time. And uh, kind of tough to probably pick that up, but I'll show you the procedure and then maybe we'll zoom in and maybe we can get a better sound test on this engine running and whether or not you can hear it. It really does me no good to use a tachometer and do the RPM drop because there's an idle air control motor involved with this car. And every time I, I short a cylinder out, uh, the idle air control motor is just gonna simply raise the idle speed back up to a normal level. And uh, this is really more of a sound test and we're focused on the number one cylinder because we have a number one cylinder misfire. And I'm, I'm gonna do the test and, and then, then we'll talk about it a little bit more. What you wanna do, make sure your test light is closer than your finger at all times. We wanna give this spark somewhere to go. So my test light's connected to ground. I'm just using a test light because it has a nice solid uh, point on it and I can direct it very easily. So two things I want to do, pull it away, and I want to look at my spark and see how far it jumps for each cylinder. And then if I like that, then I put it back on and I listen to it back and forth. You go on and off while you're listening for the RPM. And I'll stop talking now and see if we can pick that up. Ah, I'll wait till the cooling fan shuts off. definitely not going to be able to hear it with the cooling fan running. Something else I've noticed when, while this car is warming up is our misfire has gotten better the warmer this engine has become. So uh, when we did this RPM drop test initially, there was really no change on cylinder number one. And now I'm getting a little bit of a change compared to the other cylinder. So it is contributing and it's contributing better with the engine warmer, but we're gonna continue to test. I should still be able to show you what, I, what we found. So we've got a cylinder, do cylinder one again, try to listen to it. You hear a little bit of an RPM change. Cylinder two. A lot more change on cylinder two, and of course, if we were worried about cylinder two, we would hold the, hold that away a little bit further and watch the gap. That looks great. But I'm not so worried about the coil. Our focus is number one, so we just want to listen to them. We'll go to the next one. This is cylinder three. Cylinder four. Back to one.
So I'm not sure how well that picked up on camera, but you can definitely hear sitting here that cylinder number one has poor cylinder contribution. So we're going to focus on the number one as our trouble code showed us. And the next step we're going to do would be to, well we have a couple different directions we can go. Uh, we can move spark plugs around and see if it changes. We can move wires around. Uh, we could have a compression problem in the number one cylinder. We could have an injector problem. A little bit of a history on this car. It's had new plugs, new wires, uh, different coil put on it, and a whole set of injectors in the attempts of this owner trying to fix this car. Now they weren't all new parts. Uh, we were told the injectors were from a junkyard, but in any case, before any of this work was done, we had a cylinder number one misfire, and we continued to have a cylinder, cylinder number one misfire. So of course we need to look at the injector, we need to look at the ignition still, we know the coil's fine, but we don't know about the plug and wire, and we need to look at compression, um, but based on what was done on this car in the past, that's going to kind of dictate the direction we're going to go with this next. Okay, I think the next, uh, the next direction that we're going to go is what I would do in the field, and that's do a, a relative compression test, although in this case, I don't want to show that again. I've shown how to do it on two different cars. Um, but what I do want to do is use the starter sound, the way the engine cranks, to give me an idea how the compression is in this engine. Again, we're worried about number one. Number one cylinder could be spark, could be fuel, could be compression. Can you give me a clear flood mode crank again? And we'll listen to this engine, see what it sounds like. Okay. As far as the sound goes, um, and I did video this on, on another video that I showed what, the, what it sounds like. You could actually hear it. It was, it was pretty, pretty obvious that inconsistency in the crank um, is not the case here. This sounds pretty even, pretty uniform. I'm not so much worried about compression yet. Now, I could be wrong, and we could have a compression problem, but I'm going to say, based on that test, by the way the engine sounds, that I'm not going after compression next. So again, history of this vehicle had plugs, had wires put in it, had a coil pack put in it, had injectors put in it. And this problem was there before. It was a cylinder number one misfire. So there is something else that can cause misfiring. And what you can have is an intake gasket on one cylinder that the gasket's torn and it's causing a lean condition on that one cylinder and that's the problem with this car and I want to show you how to identify that. There's a couple different ways uh, but I want to show you one that I use and it's very effective and everybody has one and it's a squirt bottle. Um, so I'm going to start the car and I want you guys to listen very closely as I'm spraying this water. What we're listening for is we are listening for um, a sound change. You can actually hear the water getting sucked into this intake when I'm doing it. Go ahead and start the car. So I'm just using a regular squirt bottle. Make sure it's a stream so you can direct it. This little bit of water that's going to get sucked into this intake is not going to hurt this engine. See if you can hear it. I'll direct it right on. This is the number one intake runner right here. I'll stop talking and start spraying. I don't know if you, I'm pretty sure you saw in the engine, uh, in the video the engine get a little rougher. I'm not sure you heard that. I'll try to get you closer. Okay, again, I'm on the number one intake runner, spraying water. And there it is. That is confirmed. What's causing our number one cylinder misfire is a bad intake gasket. And if you can remember what I said before that this engine was misfiring a lot more when it was cold. And as it was warmed up, as we were filming, it started the misfire actually started to get better. So it made my RPM drop test a little bit more inconclusive. 
but that matches an intake gasket. When you have a cold engine misfire, I actually have this listed in my book in section one on misfire diagnostics that one of the causes of a misfire is an intake gasket. And on some of these cars, they'll only miss when it's cold. And once that intake heats up, and once the cylinder head heats up, it expands and it closes off the vacuum leak on that intake runner. So you gotta be careful with these. And one of the keys for that would be looking at your freeze frame data, looking at your misfire freeze frame data and seeing what temperature the engine was misfiring at. That's kind of a guide, but this one was actually still there hot. Um, I could smoke test the intake and show you the smoke coming out of it, but it's really not necessary. I mean, anybody can do the water test. Um, I've done this in my backyard where I have a friend's car, it's got a misfire and you just take a, take a garden hose and you know, don't, uh, you know, have it going everywhere, but you dump it across the intake and, and you listen to the engine. If you hear any hissing or any, you can actually hear the water getting sucked in like I just showed you, a very effective test for finding an intake gasket leak. So that was the cause, that's the problem on this car, cylinder number one misfire was caused by a torn intake gasket on the number one cylinder.